Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you from a rainy Westlake Village, California. It is bright. It's early. It is President's Day. Happy President's Day to you out there. I hope you're enjoying it with your family and your friends and you're not at work, but the entire crypto market is absolutely pumping right now. And we're going to be talking about the potential altcoin season, what coins to be on the lookout for and kind of what phase of the market are we in? And I always love to bring up this uh, rocket your retirement to the moon. Yes, indeed, that's what we are here to do. And we're gonna talk about this more specifically. Uh, what phase of the market are we actually in? So there's our daily market analysis, our resource center. Not only do we have uh, Bitcoin having kind of cycle chart, bullish and bearish divergence, but this, Good old favorite it's called the wall street cheat sheet and i don't know if you guys can see this here but the question is what phase of the market are we in right we talked about depression back there disbelief and uh i would say we are entering kind of the hope phase then you got optimism then you got the phase where everybody's telling you to buy more, buy more, and your gardener is telling you to do the same thing, right? And uh, so that's the good news. I think we are just ahead of the hope phase. And I'm going to talk about uh, which coin sector we think is going to pump uh, coming uh, over the next week, I'd say, over the next week. Is it going to be gaming coins, uh, Ethereum beta coins, or file storage coins. And um, one thing I think leading the narrative right now, before I get into Bitcoin is Nvidia has earnings to post here pretty soon. I wonder if my Nvidia chart is here today. Good old Nvidia. Wow, I remember the last time they posted earnings. It seemed like not too long ago. How's our Tesla trade doing? Tesla is getting a bounce to fill the gap right off the zone we were talking about. I do imagine it bodes well uh, if NVIDIA does well. Tesla is kind of like an AI company. If you got the full self-driving in your car there. Um, anyways, uh, more importantly, when is NVIDIA, when does NVIDIA report earnings? When does they report earnings? February 21st. So coming up in two days. So we'll take a look at what I think is probably going to pump up the next week is again, those altcoin, those uh, AI tokens right before the chat GBD conference. Uh, we talked about this one, Bitenzer Tau, supposedly the number one AI token out there. Um, AGIX is another one. I wish my chart was a little less. I, I wanted to pair as much as I could for today's video, but um, I needed to just get it going here. Otherwise, I'll ne never get it done. And I've got meetings all day today. So going to be trying to wrap it up. The other two AI tokens that I know of is AGIX and Fetch AI. Let me know in the comments below if you got any favorites you want me to take a look at. But these are both lifting off right now. One's up 15%. The other one's about to make new all time highs. It hasn't done it yet. But uh, AGIX Coming back from the depths of quite a bit of a correction there. So that's exciting. I, I do think AI tokens probably going to lead this week surrounding that narrative. And I'd say these are the top three. Uh, these two are available on Coinbase and Tau is available on Mexi. My current favorite exchange to trade on. There's a link in the description below. They got a lot of the cool coins that come out first typically. And uh, I guess we'll talk about Bitcoin starting it off now. Getting into our good old Bitcoin chart. Uh, Bitcoin, hey, let's take a look at it on the CMEs here. And uh, we identified a bit of a range, a deviation below and above, and now a breakout. Where's that potential target? Uh, if you are in a more volatile market, you want to use that 1618 FIB coming in at 56,465 on CME, that's an area of interest. If we look on a candle body basis, that's when I do a fib retracement from the high to the low. You can see we're just grinding up against the 1618. So the question is, are we gonna continue to break out here? Momentum uh, did get up in the critical zone, showing us that the market is trending and there's a lot more room to go. And speaking of that, why do we think there's more room to go in crypto land? Well, 
Soaring demand for Bitcoin ETF spurred a record 2.5 billion in inflows led by BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF called iBit. And it shows Bitcoin ETF received most, most of the week inflows amassing 1.6 billion in capital from February 12th to the 16th. And then uh, interesting, I found this one breaking uh, out gold ETF increases gold outflows. So people are selling their gold and buying some Bitcoin. Just look at the picture there. While inflows into Bitcoin ETFs rise massively. Another good tweet here uh, from the Bitcoin archive. Justin BlackRock ETF now holds over $5 billion worth of Bitcoin. A little math on that one. And uh, the, the supply is just getting taken from us, taken away. Um, interesting post here. This is a picture of what happened to gold after the gold ETF in 2004. Gold runs from 300 bucks to 1900 bucks. I wonder if that's gonna be a picture for Bitcoin's chart. And um, yeah, let's get back into that Bitcoin chart. So taking a look at the CME's momentum will flip back to the upside above 52,739. Um, but as far as I'm considering, this is just consolidation at a high level before another breakout. You know, could we come back and retest a little bit? Yes. Uh, and I think actually this PMARP is a good, if the PMARP loses this white moving average, very likely we do get that little retest to the downside. I'm looking at spot price action and I wouldn't mind it coming all the way down to 45,000. Would set that in motion for me well, if we look at the amount of bearish divergence that we have going on here, I'm just gonna take this off, make this a little bigger. So what do you have here? Uh, one, two, three. So how would we confirm this as a local high? You'd wanna close back below 50,000 bucks. And that would give us uh, one, two, three, four drives. Likely gives us a drive all the way down to that 45,000. Uh, just a wick down there would not be unforeseen for Mr. Bitcoin. I think that's it. I think that's it, Bitcoin. So critical level to hold $50,000. Um, let's see, is there anything more just scratching my eyeballs here to see on Bitcoin? Because, you know, it's kind of it's kind of uh, boring. I mean, up and only, up, only up <laughs> for Bitcoin. Uh, not a lot of excitement here. Four hour time frame is gonna curl over here and print. Well, we do have kind of a lower high there, it looks like, at least on a wick basis. Four hour is printing the same divergences. So could we get a quick snap down to 50,600? Yes, indeed. But as long as we're riding that green 55 to the upside, you can see most of the moving averages are curled up. That's another thing. So getting on to our uh, alt season, perhaps it's time for alt season. Um, I want to take a look at total two, total two, it's not on this chart. And this is the entire altcoin market cap, excluding Bitcoin. So <clears throat> excluding Bitcoin, total two on the weekly time frame. in the massive breakout we were looking for and just close the weekly bullish. And also Bitcoin did the same thing. So this is continuation for altcoins. Uh, this is a very bullish close. Bitcoin did the very same thing here. So uh, that pretty much, you know, cemented my idea that, okay, 52,000, we didn't, you know, this is kind of a confirmed breakout, like likely to continue onwards and upwards. We also took out these highs at 52,000 on that strong weekly close. Momentum is just curling back to the upside and you're gonna see volatility expanding on the five day. Is she lifted up? Yes, she is. This is our BBWP. We said, hey, look, any kind of a five day closure above 25%. A 40% move is initiated and essentially 40% from that candle was going to take us all the way up here. 40%. Boom. So back to the highs at 59,000. Um, that's kind of my base case. And some are saying, look, we're going to get the new all time high on this market before the Bitcoin having just because there's a supply shock, all this demand coming in these Bitcoin ETFs. Um, so what would that look like? Well, back on to our good old BLX chart. We have the Bitcoin having coming in here. Um, I think we're down to, um, we are down to, where is that little chart? Bitcoin having countdown, come on. There it is. 
How nice is it, is it that we have a monetary system that can be traceable and we all know what's going to happen. Happen, let's see, check out the watch, watcher guru. Uh, how many days left? 58 days left and the block reward. So interesting fact, right now uh, we're at six and a quarter Bitcoin per block, uh, which is roughly 900 Bitcoins a day. And that's gonna get cut in half to 450, yeah, after, in 58 days from now. We've been talking about it all year long. What happens going into the halving? You typically see a big rally. Now, something, a bit of an oddity here today. Uh, well, in past prior cycles, we've never made a new all-time high before the halving. Typically, you get that sell-off, the 61, <laughs> the 618, that 30% correction. And that's kind of what we were looking for. But... Um, you know, every time we had a little sell off here, I think that one was 30, a little sell off. I think that one was 40, what, how much was that? 48%, 34% there, 60% there. So we have not had that uh, pre having correction. So maybe, and from what I can see, there's not a whole lot of sell orders hanging out uh, at the top, at the top here. Uh, block capital, actually going to check in. It's better to check in for yourself, high block capital. Let's, let's, what is it? Check, but verify, or better to verify than just assume somebody else you heard on the internet is telling the truth, right? <laughs> Custom dashboard. No, I wanna take a look at the liquidations heat map. Oh, so looking at the seven day time frame, those major sell orders coming in at 56.8 and then 62.5. 62.5, interesting. Let's take a look on the one month chart to see if there's anything brighter. Look at the bright yellow down here at 41,000. Uh, we got some at 47.4 and a bit here at 50,000. So remember the market maker is gonna push price to where the most liquidity is, but also they wanna take advantage of as many people as possible. So right now for them to push it to the upside, maybe they wanna suck more people in and then we start to see these bright yellow uh, things start to dissipate. You know, people either take their positions off or uh, yeah, essentially that that's what, what it would mean. So as price pushes higher, we've got a nice bright level at 53, 53.8. I mean, that FOMO is really gonna start to kick in here, guys. So needless to say, <clears throat> let's get into some of the altcoins and I'm just gonna quickly go to CoinGecko. Coin Gecko, which I've actually feel a bit more useful as of lately in researching coins and whatnot, except for they always make me verify that I'm human. I, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't necessarily love that. But if we go and look at, oh, AI coins, boom. Bitender, Rents, Akasha Network, Singularity, uh, Corgi, Echelon Prime, Ocean, I know those ones are really starting to break out. Uh, Ocean uh, and this PAL AI is supposed to be pretty hot. Uh, AIOZ network also supposed to be pretty hot. But again, do your own research as you go farther down the, anything outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? Your risk level goes up quite a bit, but where there's more risk, there is more reward. So starting it off, Bit tens are only up 11% in the past seven days. Render 28%, Fetch up 37%, Akasha up 27% in the last 30 days. And Singularity, that's the one we went over. AGIX, 73%. Um, so some of these AI coins really starting to wake up. PAL up 79%, whatever that is, 45. Ocean Protocol, 45% in the last seven days. So I really don't like to FOMO into these type of things, but where there's more FOMO, there's always more FOMO. No, it's something, you know, when the markets are being irrational, they can always be more irrational. Um, so went over some of those coins. I'm gonna jump into ETH. ETH is just ripping to our target, to the upside. I mean, guys, congratulations if you took that trade. Uh, we definitely got this one, uh, nailed it to a T. As soon as we broke out here, it was a bit slow to get started. And why is Ethereum lagging Bitcoin? Uh, I don't know, but I imagine that it's going to start to, I'm just going to clean this baby up, clean the, it's really going to start to uh, heat up here as um, the FOMO is going to kick in. 
and uh, that fear of missing out fear of missing out I do think uh, Neutron is probably putting a short-term pullback after a massive rally, right? Another one that got away from me was Casper. Let's check in on IMX, IMX. And the ones I like, I mean, we're, we're just getting up to the all-time highs, I think. Let's just double check here, IMX, IMX. But the ones that haven't new all-time highs that, um, you know, have been around for some time that are supposed to be good projects. You know, already you can see this one's a $4 billion market cap. That's like why I like uh, plays. This one has a lot to go, a lot to go. And that's pretty exciting for Mr. Immutable X. Um, what else did we, we, we covered a lot today, guys. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to wrapping it. Make sure you guys, you know, leave a comment below if you have a question or you want me to go over a particular coin. I'll be happy to check them out. Okay, we talked about, yeah, so. The higher beta Ethereum plays are, in my opinion, Arbitrum and Optimism. Uh, both seem to be putting massive higher lows in at the moment, as this one's about to make new all-time highs. Arbitrum is being a bit of a laggard, has more total value locked. I'd say this is probably the, um, you know, again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but this is the one I'd be looking at, and I could be wrong. I could definitely be wrong. Um, those are the, so again, what do we think is going to pump this week? I think they're all going to pump. Honestly, they're all going to pump alongside Bitcoin, especially if Bitcoin gets, you know, back above 53,000. Really, things are going to start to move. Um, but the short term target on Bitcoin, you know, may have been hit again on a candle body basis. We're at the 1618. We're just grinding up there. And what I do like, though, is when it's grinding up there, uh, you know, at the top of the uh, bullish control zone, you can get that last splurt up and, you know, get it up here. That's that's when, you know, really big moves tend to happen. So something, you know, momentum is going to flip down. We're kind of in, it's hard to pull the trigger on anything at these high levels, but I think uh, retail involvement. So let's do a Google search. Google searches of Bitcoin. So uh, real search trends, Google trends, yep, Bitcoin. So over the past 12 months, no, we don't wanna be in India, worldwide. So we're still coming from a low level. That's the, the trajectory past five years. 2020, I, I mean, when you start to sit up here, that's when the market's getting overheated. So you can tell retail in, um, well, look at El Salvador, Nigeria, Australia. It looks like America hasn't caught on yet. And uh, that, I mean, I just talked to one of my high school or childhood friends from playing baseball at the gym today, just sold his house. And he was like, and I've been, I've been feeding him the, you know, gospel for, you know, past couple of months. I just saw this kid, you know, and, you know, again, we were childhood friends. He's like, yeah, man, I sold my house. Oh, I just put it all in CDs at 4%. I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? You're that far behind. You're, you're my age. You don't know what is, you're, you, you know, and you're buying CDs. Craziness. Craziness. Okay. Um, and I guess we'll go over a couple of storage coins. I think, um, you know, one that I had my eyes on, actually, ICP, which I think is a storage coin. They do storage, a whole bunch of stuff. It's like, but one of the things that they do uh, is... Anyways, this one on, from a charting perspective, where's my ICP here? Just from a charting perspective, it does look like it's about to break out on the daily. Again, the RSI, probably gonna reject the bullish control zone on the first pass, but that next kind of higher low on the daily, uh, very likely busts on through. And then this one has a lot, a lot of room to grow, right? Or is it the all time high? Oh, what was that 200 how many percentage gain is that wow i'm not even going to say that Twenty thousand percent gains i don't know if that's realistic if we're going to make new all-time highs on mr icp but i heard it's quite a highly esteemed piece of internet technology um, what's important guys at the end of the day is you know at some point don't confuse brains with the bull market we're in the bull market now everybody can make money everybody can pick throw a dart at the board and pick something and probably make money, right? But do you know when to take your profits? And that's what we'll be covering on the channel, when to exit, how to exit, and um, 
Hit like and subscribe. If you enjoyed some of the content today, post a comment below. And I guess if we're going to talk about Filecoins. So remember, the three narratives that are probably pumping right now, Filecoin up 11%, really about to break out pretty gnarly here. Um, and once it gets above this level, I'd say even, even these highs over here, it's probably going to send. Filecoin is like one of the numbers, number one storage, storage data availability. You know, there's three, th I saw a really interesting interview from Arthur Hayes saying, look, like what's the future going to be? Bitcoin, AI, crypto, blah, blah, blah. Like there's going to be so much out there. And if you're AI, you don't care what government or country you're in. If you're a robot, right? And all they need is access to electricity and storage data. And with all the new AI stuff out there, it's pretty incredible what some of the AI generations are doing. They need storage data. So probably a narrative to keep our eyes on as well. Um, so is it going to be gaming? Is it going to be beta plays on ETH? Or is it going to be storage coins? We didn't even touch on any gaming coins, but uh, I'll just pop a couple up here that uh, I do think are probably going to do well or continue to do well. Super, uh, might have kind of missed this one if you didn't get on it earlier. Super up uh, quite a bit, but just curious to see what Super's market cap is. And uh, Mr. Superverse, part of Elio Trades' gang and Alex Becker, I think it has some, some kind of involvement there. Oh, this pixels, super. Let's jump into the Superverse, the metaverse. I do like that it's down, but on the one year it's not, max. So does it have room to grow? At a $500 million market cap, I do think so. Also wanna take a look at the circulating supply and the max supply of coins. So we're talking about uh, 450 million. So about 50% in circulation right now out of uh, almost a billion tokens max supply. So, you know, they still have some room to dump on us, but um, I, I really like the narrative and I hear some very exceptional things are coming in the winds here soon on this one, whatever that is. And next up, next up, ooh, I got an appointment here. Yes, indeed, let's really talk about what is up and coming, what is up and coming. We're talking about Superverse Gaming Coin. Okay, I'll give you another blaster right here. Shrap, Shrapnel, one of the best graphic looking. Uh, everybody else is so cool when they do their little YouTubes. They show all the graphics and yeah, this coin is cool. Dude, I'm just going to look at the chart, okay? Low market cap, probably the most comparable short-term target up to here, but I would not be surprised to see this one make some new all-time highs this year. A parabolic blow-off top up here at 122 would be the ultimate target for this one. Um, you know, if you're going to buy and hold for the whole cycle, again, you know, higher risk, higher reward opportunities out there. Um, <clears throat> I just turned $140 into $1,300 over the last two weeks. Yes, it's possible in the land of cryptocurrency. My name is Chris Mitchell. I am the CEO of Crypt Courses, and I'm bringing you this video because I'm going to give you some really good information on how to buy, sell, and trade digital currency. Now, you've probably heard about a lot of people making a lot of money in crypto but you don't feel safe or intelligent enough to make the investment. That's why I created Bitcoin 101, how to stack sats using technical analysis. It's the crypto traders dream to starting your crypto journey. It's absolutely free. All you gotta do is click on the link in the description below and we will get you your free guide today. Trapnel, another gaming coin um, that is on my list is uh, Willie Beeman. Somebody, when I, somebody uh, asked me, what about Willie Beeman coin? It's just Beam. Um, and there's our measure move target off of this one. Um, I mean, we called the breakout and I'd say it's off to a good start. Probably getting a little overheated here. Probably want to wait for a pullback. Um, 
but sometimes when volatility does this, it's starting to curl around, showing us that you know the end of this move is potentially happening. But then you get a snake back around to the upside. So this is just the first rise, rise to victory on Mr. Beam. So I'm actually thinking this probably going to snake around one more time, get heated, and then one more time, and then your that's your three, your third time, and that's that's probably going to be the end. Um, you know, at least on a short-term basis. Chain link, low volatility on the daily, getting ready to explode. I am glad that I caught this one and, you know, very much a consolidation at the highs, uh, similar to what we're seeing on Mr. Casper. Doggy coin, breakout target there. Um, oh, this, this one, wild. Is this right? Wild, 15%. Is this world coin? Is this wild coin? Oh, this one looks good. If, if, if this one's just breaking out here, um, still in the middle of the consolidation. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is a gaming coin also. Wilder world. Boom. So let's check this out. Wild. Wilder world up 19% today. Poor Richmond. I'm sorry. You, Wait, I think we both got out of it early. Um, this one, uh, you know, still at the lows low market cap 112 billion wilder world is a massive multiplayer metaverse game by ethereum anyways i think i did enough for today monday happy president's day hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure you hit that like button for me share it with a friend and have yourself a blessed one and i will see you guys tomorrow take care